from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this breaking analysis in this Cube Insights powered by ETR. I'm Dave Vellante, and this episode is about data protection. You might be saying, Dave, why are you going to bore us with the conversation about backup? Well, it's interesting. The market is actually quite hot. You know, over the last 18 to 24 months, there's been well over a billion dollars, probably 1.3, 1.4 billion dollars raised uh, just from companies like Rubrik, Cohesity, uh, Druva, Zerto, and a number of other startups uh, like Clumio is a name you might not have heard of, and I'm going to mention a couple of others. So you have the situation where these upstarts, particularly Rubrik and Cohesity, are really challenging the install base players. And they're spending a lot of money on marketing, uh, and on engineering, and sales, and they're going to market, and they're really shaking things up. And I want to talk about that dynamic, share with you some ETR data, and talk about some of the other players like Veeam, who was you know, a rocket ship because of uh, the virtualization trend, how are they faring in this kind of new market? And why is this market gaining so much attention today? And what does this mean for incumbents? What does it mean for customers who can achieve uh, escape velocity? And what are some of the likely outcomes uh, that we see? The market is very confused right now. If you look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant um, the, and compare that to, for instance, the Forrester wave, if, you know, Dell EMC is not even in the Forrester wave. Uh, uh, the you know, Gartner Magic Quadrant has rubric, you know, not as a leader, and, and it's just all over the place. And so what I want to do is use some ETR data and some context from theCUBE to share with you, our audience, what we are seeing in the marketplace and kind of what it all means. So let's get into it. Alex, if you bring up the first slide. I first want to make a statement about the overall storage market. The, the ETR data set, which is incredible, doesn't drill down into backup, although it does have pure play backup vendors in the data set. So I want to start with storage because it's, a, it's the superset of the data protection market. So what this chart shows is the, all the sectors and it shows the net scores. Remember, net score is, they, they ask every, every quarter, are you spending more, are you spending less, are you spending the same? They subtract the less from the more and that gives you net score. So this is the net score for the three periods of October uh, 18 survey, July 19 survey, and the October 19 survey. And you can see the red line shows, you know, storage is kind of on the back burner. Yeah, it's upticking a little bit from previous surveys, but it's got a net score of 18. That's crappy, I mean, it's not really a hot market. And I've talked in previous episodes and breaking analysis as to why, really two main factors that I cited, cloud guys eating away at the traditional storage array business and flash injected so much capacity and performance into the equation that data center managers are, are saying, hey, I don't really need any more storage right now. So storage is kind of on the back burner. You can see I blew it up here and, and you can see sort of how it's playing. You see the hot sectors are analytics, cloud computing, container platforms, data warehousing is, is, is making a comeback. I've talked about Snowflake on previous uh, breaking analyses. Machine learning and AI and new workloads, robotic process automation, even virtualization. These are the hot sectors that are, that are driving spending. But I will tell you, storage ultimately is going to be there. It won't be down forever because people are always going to need storage. These new workloads are going to require new storage and obviously backup. If you go to the next slide, Alex, you can see some of the, the vendors here. So you know, we've sort of established, okay, storage is, is right now, it's down, it's not one of the hottest sectors. But you can see there's some companies in here that are pretty hot. The rubric leads the list with a net score of 53%. Uh, now the shared N, might be a little hard for you to read here, but the shared N, out of the last survey, 1,300 respondents from the ETR survey answered what their you know, spending intentions were. And then the individuals mentioning um, specific companies, in this case rubric, 55. So it's kind of a small shared N. You can see Pure Storage, a company that we've talked about previously, you know, continues to, to show strength, you know, 48.1%. Down slightly from you know, the previous quarters, but still really the only clear share gainer in the overall uh, uh, primary storage market. Um, again, Rubrik, 
You can see Nutanix is up on the list. Veeam is actually quite impressive. I'm going to show you some data in a minute that, that uh, I think will impress you in terms of Veeam's continued staying power. You see vSAN on there. Cisco's on the list. <clears throat> God knows why Cisco's on the list. Their storage is not you know, perceived as, as, as leading, uh, but they do have offerings and Cisco's so big, people just kind of, yeah, we're buying from Cisco. Uh, you see cohesity there. A little dip this past uh, survey, but still very strong. Again, I'll show you some other data there, you know, et cetera. So you can see the, the point is, even though storage is down, there are a couple of shining stars, like Rubrik, like Nutanix, Pure Storage, Veeam, Cohesity, uh, et cetera. So let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Before I do that, I just want to share with you some trends on this slide with regard to the, the backup market. You know, I, I, I underscore backup because it's no longer just the backup market, it's evolving. So, there's pressure on the overall storage market, but, but, but data protection is actually really hot right now. Uh, it's, it's, it's captured a lot of venture capital. Startups are moving in. I'll, I'll, I'll mention a few that you might not have heard of. Why? Well, several reasons. One is the data explosion continues. It's, it's, it's growing at an exponential rate and it's kind of non-linear. Um, digital transformations are all about how you leverage data. And so, if you're making your business a data business and a digital business, well, you better have a way to protect it. So things like ransomware are coming into play and people are really concerned, obviously, about ransomware. So, so data protection ev evolves and expands, sort of transcends back up into uh, business continuity. Uh, cloud and hybrid cloud are some other trends that I'll talk about in more detail that are driving opportunities for what were traditionally known as backup and really now are evolving into sort of these new areas. Last decade, it was about moving from, from tape to disk, you know, tape sucks. That was kind of the data domain mantra. And they were the hot company of last decade. They got, you know, they did an IPO, they reached escape velocity, they sold for 2.5 billion. You know, but today, you know, the data domain platform that EMC bought uh, and, and now is Dell EMC, is kind of old school, right? It's these new guys that are coming after that. So, so while, while Data Domain pioneered data deduplication and higher performance backup moving to storage, today it's a whole new uh, conversation. And people have come to the realization that the primary and active storage is only about 20% of the stored data. All the, all the less hot data, I don't want to say inactive stuff, it's not cold storage, but it's files and objects and copies and replicas and, and, and backups, that's 80% of the marketplace today it, in terms of the volume of data. Not necessarily the spend, you know, OLTP stuff, primary storage is expensive, flash array is expensive, but huge opportunity, especially in terms of data growth. That's where all the data growth is happening, all that unstructured data. So today, the conversation is evolving to data protection, data management, Data assurance, uh, particularly with containers. So you think about spinning up containers, spinning down containers, you know, dozens, hundreds, thousands of containers. How do you keep track of that stuff? How do you protect that? How do you assure that your data is not leaking, that you're not exposed? And so that's a really hot area that you're seeing a number of startups focus on. So real focus on recovery becomes much more important for a digital business. How fast can I recover? Um, Security, compliance, this notion of data assurance, CDM on this slide, which is, stands for copy data management, uh, a practice that was really popularized by Actifio. DevOps, really supporting DevOps through a data management platform, being able to give live copies or near live copies of, of, of data so that you know, test can be tested on you know, much more fresh data and that in, in compressing that cycle time, analytics becomes more important. I talked about ransomware before. Well, you can look at the, the, the backup corpus and do analytics on that to see if there are anomalies and anomalous behavior just in terms of bad actors coming in. So all this stuff joined with cloud and hybrid cloud and is sort of bridging the legacy business and it's bringing out a lot of new challengers uh, to the incumbents. So let's take a look at some of that data from ETR. Alex, if you go to the next slide, this is the ETR data set on backup vendors. So what I've done here is, it is pulled out of storage the pure play data protection folks. So I can you know, call them backup vendors, they hate when I call them backup. No, we're much more than backup, it's, we're data management. 
Now, data management means a lot of things to a lot of people, uh, but, but nonetheless, they are expanding and transcending pure backup, so, so credit to them. This is the net score timeline from January 2017 to the latest October survey from uh, Enterprise Technology Research. And you can see here, I've pulled out Rubrik, Cohesity, Veeam, Commvault, and Veritas. And Rubrik leads, as I say, with 53% net score, followed by Veeam, 44%. So you can see Veeam really hanging tough. Now, Cohesity, just rel relatively new to the survey, jumped up, jumped down a little bit in, in this quarter. You'll see that. You'll see that in the ETR data. I, I wouldn't get too freaked out about it. I think Cohesity still got some, some tailwinds and some momentum, momentum as does Rubrik. But look at Veeam. Veeam's ascendancy came from um, really VMware. They were the VMware specialist and they were all virtualized and now you know, they do bare metal, they're doing cloud and multi-cloud and, and, and they back up you know, Office 365 and, and, and so that's the SaaS platform. But look at how well they've held up. Um, quite impressive there uh, with, with Veeam. Uh, made, a, made a major push into the enterprise, kind of pivoted back to SMB, but still does a lot of business in the enterprise, and you can see him showing up here. What's relevant to me is the, the, the shared end. In other words, out of the 1,300 in the total survey, how many are responding to these vendors? Rubric 55, relatively small. Veeam 155, much larger, so a bigger install base. Cohesity 42, kind of just getting started in the ETA data set. Uh, Commvault 105, uh, so, Commvault's a $700 million uh, uh, company in revenues on a tra trailing 12-month basis. They get about a $2.2 billion market cap. They, they just bought Hedvig. They're moving toward a SaaS model. Uh, they launched a product called Metallic. They get a very, very large install base. Uh, you can see their net scores. Yeah, well, they're holding relatively well. They're, they're smaller, obviously. They're lower than, than those top three. And then you can see Veritas. Veritas is the big whale in the business. They kind of, mostly, you know, almost a pure play software company. They do have an appliance, but they, they really are uh, the, the, the leader, a leader here, um, and have had a, a, a big market. They went private, they got bought by Symantec. Symantec didn't know what to do with them. They fumbled around with it. They did a private equity deal. You know, that was going okay, but they had some management turnover. A private equity, you know, squeezed them a little bit, even though they made some investments in the platform. And so Veritas, has you know, some challenges. They have to serve the install base, but at the same time, they got to compete with the new guys. And all the new guys, Cohesity and Rubrik in particular, are attacking you know, the Veritas uh, install base, you know, certainly Commvault, uh, and as well, uh, Dell and EMC. You can't have a discussion really um, uh, around leadership and, and, and backup and data protection without talking about Dell and EMC. They're so large. So Alex, if you go to the next slide, you can see the, sh the net score for Dell EMC, the N here is 348. Much, much larger uh, than some of the other guys that I just mentioned. Um, I'm actually looking at Veritas 97, even though I have a large install base. So Dell EMC, but here's the caveat. This is all of Dell EMC storage. So it's not just the pure play backup. The previous slide I was showing you pure play data protection vendors, this is all of Dell EMC, so it includes all their primary stuff, all their flash storage, all their storage, not the other parts of their business, not the compute and, 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 and analytics and other stuff, just storage. So I'm using this as a proxy, okay? So this is not Dell's data protection business only. And so what, let me make some comments there and then I'll comment on Dell's uh, uh, data protection business. You can see it came out of uh, the, the downturn out of you know, past 2009, big uptick. And Joe Tucci used to say, we're going to come out stronger, we're going to invest through the downturn, we got the cash, we're going to come out stronger. And that's exactly what happened. They came out very strong, but then, you know, cash flow started to get squeezed. They expanded their product portfolio. It was like product du jour, all these mega launches. And it just got too confusing for customers. Salesforce got confused, they got less productive. And then, and then Dell, or EMC at the time, was really relying on VMware. It's the value in Dell, <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep saying Dell. Value in, e, in EMC at the time was really in VMware. And you can see that kind of steady decline in the net score. And that's what happened. Elliott Management came in, they squeezed uh, uh, EMC, kind of forced, them, forced their hand, and then Dell ended up taking them private. Let me make some comments about the Dell acquisition and, and specifically Dell EMC's data protection business. 
Dell EMC took its eye off the ball in storage generally, but specifically in, in the data protection business. It fell behind, it wasn't investing fast enough, it had some management changes, it put Beth Phelan in charge a, a couple years ago now, and her task was, okay, she was, she was tasked with shoring up this business. So, but they had to get some new products out, they had to focus on you know, some of the, the, the lower end of the market and then have to refocus on the higher end of the market. So they've really begun to get their act together again in, in data protection and really refreshing the data domain uh, uh, piece of the portfolio, bringing Avamar and data domain together um, and, and becoming much more competitive. Having said that, they lost some ground, okay? So they've got that same challenge, challenge as Veritas. They've not only got the new guys coming at them with this modern you know, data platform, they've got to service the existing install base and sort of manage that cash flow. They're now a public company again. So a lot of pressure on those guys. I want to go back to the, to the previous chart, Alex, if you will, and then the one that shows you know, Rubrik, Cohesity, Veeam, Commvault, and, and Veritas, the, the pure plays. There's some other dynamics that I want to uh, talk, talk about here. HPE exited the software business, um, it's, it's, it's core software business, it sold off to MicroFocus, and as part of that, it sold off Data Protector. When it did that, it opened up a whole new partnership opportunity for uh, these emerging companies. In particular, Cohesity and Veeam are actually reselling through HPE. HPE's got a massive channel, and those two companies are doing very well there. I, I said you can't talk about data protection without talking about Dell EMC. Same thing for IBM, you, you got to talk about IBM. IBM is a huge install base, and IBM for, bought Tivoli years ago, Frank Moss's company, and, and then they served mainframes, and it was this big complicated platform, kind of still is, and so IBM had to make a move. So it, it, it was getting killed in the marketplace by Veeam in particular, so it created Spectrum Protect Plus. And, and IBM has really gone after software defined. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's begun to modernize its platform, going after containers, as, as I mentioned, is a hot area. But it's still got that same problem. It's got to service the install base. And so they're sort of doing that balancing act but definitely had to you know, refresh the portfolio and has done a good job there with Spectrum Protect Plus. A couple other companies that I haven't mentioned. Uh, Druva is getting into that whole data management space. Um, so Cohesity and Rubrik kind of redefining back up into data management. Veeam goes back to the basics, really talks about backup and data protection, data management as being the future. So it's kind of de trying to deposition Rubrik and Cohesity as, as, as you know, much more in the future and not here today. And so they're sort of playing that marketing game which, and, and very effectively, as you can see by its net scores. Um, again, Druva hopping on the, the data management bandwagon. Zerto, kind of a DR replication expert. Clumio is calling BS on all these guys and saying, we're going pure SaaS model. And, and Clumio does uh, uh, SaaS for, pure SaaS, pure software for just AWS. Small company, but it's raised a bunch of dough. Uh, it's raised about $50 million, I think. But here's some other names you might not have heard of. Cast.io, Valero, uh, Trilio. These guys are going hard after containers and what, what I referred to earlier as data assurance. So the big question is, who's going to be able to achieve escape velocity for the, for the upstarts? Who's going to be able to hold serve for the, the incumbents? Let me make a couple of comments on that. I think storage eventually is going to bounce back, as I say. Some of those hot emerging workload areas like AI, they, they're going to need storage. Um, you know, analytics is going to be, be driving, you know, the need for these types of things, security, data assurance, data protection, so storage will, data is, don't bet against data. So storage will, I think, eventually, you know, bounce back. And unlike compute, where Intel makes all the margin, um, storage is more like networking, where you get really good margins. It's a, you know, 60 plus percent gross margin business. Pure storage has almost 70% gross margins. Cloud is the wild card here. I predict you're going to see the cloud vendors begin to dramatically expand you know, their, their portfolios. And you know, beyond just kind of S3, simple object storage, okay, yeah, we got Elastic, you know, a block store, EBS from Amazon, you know, Microsoft has you know, the, you know, similar storage as this Google. They are going to double down on storage. They're going to, they're going to look at storage as a bigger opportunity, and that is a wild card. It could you know, continue to pressure the traditional storage guys, but 
but look, let's face it, it's a hybrid world, still a ton of stuff going on-prem, so, so I think that, that the, the overall market will, will bounce back. I think data protection as a subset and data management is going to grow faster. It has some tailwinds. I think it's got an expanding TAM, and those tailwinds are digital data, digital business, security, data assurance, this new management capability that I talked about, uh, 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 DevOps, and container protection, container platforms as I showed you earlier in the ETR data is one of the hottest areas going. And I think you're going to see some consolidation. You saw Comp Vault bought uh, Hedvig. You're going to see some exits. Veeam is now talking about doing an IPO. It just took in a half a billion dollars <laughs> in investment. So its investors are going to want uh, an exit. Uh, so are Cohesities and Rubrics, which together have raised almost a billion dollars. So you're going to see some, some m and I think specialists like Zerto and, and Druva uh, uh, are probably going to be, be targets. I think you're going to see Dell become much, much more aggressive, kind of getting their act together. The big incumbents, IBM, you know, Veritas, refreshing their portfolio. Again, their challenge is the innovator's dilemma. So I do think you're going to see some, at least one, maybe two. The, 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 the favorites there would be Cohesity and Rubric is achieve escape velocity. I don't think there's enough room for three to be like blockbuster IPOs that, that, that can survive long term, uh, but I think this data management thing has legs and we're going to continue to watch it here. Uh, thanks to you for watching, thanks to our friends at ETR for sharing this data. This is Dave Vellante for Cube Insights powered by ETR. We'll see you next time.